Hi everyone, Janie here and today I'm going to show you how to make some beautiful glittery fairy wands and pinwheels and they can be made as fancy as you want or simple enough for older kids to do at a birthday party. But before I do that, I want to give you a heads up. So next Saturday, which is March 2nd, 2019, Crafters Castle is going to be having their Sparkle and Sprinkle YouTube video hop that is sponsored by Sparkle and Sprinkle, and you aren't going to want to miss it. So below, next to the subscribe button, there is a little bell, and just click on that, and it will remind you when the new videos come out so that you don't miss out. And of course, also in the description box below, if you click on show more, you are going to find links to the products that I use today and anything else important that you need to know. Now, let's head on over to the craft table and get started. Okay, are you all ready to get glitter everywhere? Oh, come on, you know the funnest part of playing with glitter is that you're going to be wearing it for a week. <laughs> okay, well, what I'm going to be using today is some microfine glitter. Um, this is Tooth Fairy and this one is Margarita and this one is Pink Fizz and they are all from Sparkle and Sprinkle as well as this double-sided terrific tape. So we're going to be using that and I have a straw. Now this one isn't a paper straw and it's not a plastic straw. It is actually biodegradable and made from cornstarch. And I got a package of 200 of these for $4.99. And they actually come individually wrapped. Let me see if I can grab one here. They come individually wrapped, so they stay nice and clean until you use them. But I just like things that are biodegradable or upcycled or recycled. So. That's the kind of straw that I'm using, and if you're interested, I'm actually going to have links to all of these things below in the description box. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to set aside our microfine glitter. I love that stuff. It feels so cool. And we're going to grab our terrific tape and our straw. And what we're going to do is find the end first, obviously. And I only happen to have a quarter inch, so if you have a half inch or something like that, you'll be able to cover the straw a little bit quicker than me. But we're just going to take it and put it all the way down the side of the straw. Make sure that it's on there really good. And we'll just tear that off right there. And we're just going to keep doing this all the way around. and. Don't leave any spaces. You know, it's okay if they overlap a little bit. So we'll just speed this up while I do this. So with a quarter inch tape, it actually took four strips to go down this. But if you have half inch, it'll work even better. And now we're going to make sure that it's on there really good. And then before I peel that off, I'm going to bring over a piece of paper to catch my glitter in. I like using this so that, you know, then it has a little crease there and I can dump it back in. So I'm going to bring this here and we're going to bring in some glitter. And you know what? Let's see. Let's, let's use the pink and the green because I'm going to use more than one on here. You can do one to cover the whole thing. You can use more than one. But this is what we're going to do. So let me get these opened up so that they're ready to go. And I'm only going to do one color at a time because I don't want them to mix. I want to be able to put them back into the jar. But if they do mix, put them in another little container and use them again mixed. It'll look really cool. Okay. So. Now all I have to do is peel off the protective layer all the way around. Sticky, sticky. This is really good tape. I love it. Okay. And I'm just going to gently try to not stick to it. 
This might be a time to bring in something else to hold it. But I'm gently trying to push those edges down that I had overlapping. But you don't want to rub the sticky off, that's for sure. Okay. Now, you know what? I will be right back. Okay, I thought using tweezers might help hold on to it better. And this is crazy. I dropped this on the floor. I'm lucky I got it off the floor. It was going to stick forever. I'm not kidding you. This tape is like the forever tape. Okay, so I'm going to start off with some pink. And I'm going to sprinkle that on here. Get it on all sides. And... Turn it over this way. And we're just going to burnish it right in. This is semi transparent glitter, so you can see through it a little bit, but since I'm using this clear straw, it's not a problem. Okay. Now I'm going to set this down. And. Dump that back in and hold on one second. Sorry, I had to shake off any excess that I couldn't get into the jar because I'm hoping I don't mix anything here. If I do, it won't be the end of the world. Okay, now we're going to do some green. Like I said, you can do it all one color. You can do it more than two colors. You can do it however much you want. And we're just going to burnish this in really good. You can use your fingers like this. Um, I've seen somebody roll it around. So give me one second here, and I'm going to put this back in. Put the lid on so I don't spill it all over the place. And here we go. Now you have a beautiful straw, which is actually going to be the handle for your wand or for your um, pinwheel. And it's really easy. And believe it or not, once this is all burnished in, it will not be all over your fingers. Trust me. Let me see if I can wipe some off. I have my little Swiffer cloth here. Try to get most of the glitter off from me. And see? So it's really not coming off. Those little sprinkles were already on my fingers from before. So, that's how we got started here. Okay, here's another straw. I've already got the tape on it. And I will be pulling off these strips. Do you see how easy these layers come off? I've used other tape before where you have to sit there and dig and dig and dig and try to find a way to get the layer off and leave the tape on. But this terrific tape is just fabulous. I mean, see how easy that was to just find the end? Okay, so again, I'm going to kind of try not to get rid of the sticky, but push down the tape a little bit. And now we're going to do something else. So we've already got this just covered with sticky. And now we're going to take the tape and we're going to start at the top. And sorry, got it up too close to the camera. And we are just going to wind it around. And we have to be really careful that the top layer doesn't come off because as I've already pointed out to you, it does come off really easy, which is an absolute bonus. But at this, with this technique, you have to be really careful because you don't want it to come off. Okay, so let me wrap that back around. I will probably have to hold this end on, which is fine. Bring back over my paper. And let's see, let's use pink fizz this time. 
Okay, so we're going to use the pink fizz. And this time we're going to put it all over, not just in one place. And even if we don't get it up here on, on this very end, we'll make that the top that either the pinwheel or the wand hides. So it doesn't matter if you don't get any up there, or you can use your tweezers to hold on and do that. But let me just get this on here this way. Get it on all sides. Okay. And let's rub it on really good. Just like we did the other one. I bet you guys are already getting the idea of what's happening here, right? Okay. There we go. Trying to get as much off as I can, get it burnished in as I can before we go on to the next step. Okay. Set that down and get that in there. Whoops, stuck at the end there. I'm back. I have some on my mat. Well, I'll have to get that off later. Okay, I'm going to bring the green back over again just because that's a good contrast. So we've got margarita there, and now we're going to take off the covering of the other tape. Set that aside. This time I might use my tweezers to hold on. Okay, and now let's do the green. This is hard to turn using tweezers. Okay. I think I've got that all covered. Okay, I'm going to sit this down while I put this in there. I am making a mess on my craft mat. Yay! Get that one from there and finish burnishing this in. And look at that. You've got two colors, and with me looking at it, it doesn't look like the color is showing up that good. Let me move this aside and see if it shows up better against the black. Maybe not, but trust me, it is pretty pink and green, and it's beautiful. Isn't that fun? Really quick, this is the other method of burnishing it if you wanted to you know, roll it or, you know, rub it in this way. It doesn't matter. Whatever way works best for you. So for the wand, I'm going to be making a shaker. And what I did was I cut out a scalloped circle, the size that I wanted. And then I cut out another scalloped circle on this pattern paper that's just a little bit smaller, the next size down. And then the next thing I did was move that over and bring this one in. I cut a heart out of the center because that's where my shaker element is going to be. And then because this paper is two-sided, the other side has a different pattern. And so what I did was I put my adhesive on and then I stuck the heart right back in that space. 
and lifted this up and I left the heart there, which is boom on this side already. So this is going to be my shaker element. And before I start on that, I'm actually going to adhere some um, lace around the edges that's going to stick out. And so I'm going to do that and I'll be right back. Okay, change of plans. I decided that I'm going to attach the lace differently. So I've started on the shaker element and let me show you what I've done. I cut a piece of acetate big enough to go around the heart, but not so big that it sticks out the edges. And I attached that with the double-sided terrific tape. And I use, let me get it here really quick. This is what I use. It's actually called Duralar and it is an acetate alternative. And I buy it by the, by the tablet full of it um, at Amazon. And then I also take, let me show you one of my little tricks here. I take a fabric softener sheet and I rub that over the acetate to help prevent some of the static cling that can happen in a shaker. And then let's see, um, around the heart, I added a double layer of the foam tape. And I have a trick for going around corners that I'm actually gonna show you here really quick. So let me grab it. I'm gonna cut off a piece here. I'm not gonna cut off a big piece because I don't wanna waste it. Um, but I'm even gonna cut this in half because that's what I did for that because I needed it skinnier. So let me cut that. And then what I do to make it go around corners is I do little snips along the way, like that. And that way it will curve around the corners that you are you know, trying to do. I use this for going around circles and things like that when I'm doing shakers. So that is a really cool technique. But now that I have the acetate on and I have the double-sided foam tape on, it's ready for me to add my sequence. A lot of people do theirs the other way and then they're trying to, you know, put this on over the top and make sure they have it in the right place. But I like to do it on the bottom and that way I can see what I'm doing and line that up on the top. So let me grab some sequins here. Should have got this opened up ahead of time. I am going to add some pretty silver ones. There we go. I think that's going to be plenty. And then carefully, so that we don't bounce the sequins out, we are going to remove the protective layer of the tape. And sorry, takes a minute here. And if you guys haven't made shakers before, I also have some videos showing shaker cards and it's the same process as this, only this is just a miniature version. And now I'm gonna take with the acetate layer on the inside, I'm going to line up my heart. And this could be a challenge to do on camera because I can't exactly get my head over it. But, hmm, you know what, we're gonna call that good because it's much easier if I could put my head right over it. And there's our little shaker element. To prevent this from being an extremely long video, I did a lot of this off camera, but I am going to quickly show you what I did. So you saw where I made this into the my little shaker element and I went around the edges with some bling and added a bow and then you could see all these beautiful ribbons and pearls hanging here. I glued them on the back with my Beacon 3-in-1, which held them just fine. But for extra security, I put a few strips of the um, terrific tape across it. And I'll be peeling the backing off when I attach this to the straw. But that's what I did on this piece. So that's really pretty. And then this is going to be the back piece. So. I cut a scallop circle exactly the same as on the front, including the patterned paper one. It is just like what's on the front. 
same size and then I cut an extra heart and I um, put that on with a piece of foam tape to pop it up a little bit and I am still thinking about adding a gem or something to this so we'll see by the end of the video and then I attached um, the lace trim the little trim around the edge there and so what I need to do next is we are going to put these together like this but we're going to be attaching them to the straw and we're going to be doing that with um, some double-sided uh, terrific tape and the double-sided foam tape and there is one thing I forgot to tell you that I did hold on don't know if you can see it on here the sparkle on the white I did it on both of these um, I used a clear shimmer brush which just adds a shimmer around the edges. I think this is similar to a Wink of Stella pen. I'm not quite sure, I've never used one, but I think it is. But it's a shimmer brush um, from close to my heart so that the cardstock wasn't just a plain white, but it actually shimmers. All right, so let's get started. So the first thing I wanna do is I'm gonna take this piece and turn it over and add some double-sided tape to the back. So, okay. So we've got that on there. Now, the next thing we're gonna do is decide on which end is gonna be the top. I decided on this one. And we're gonna wrap a little of this around the top. And as usual, it's already coming off. There we go, this stuff comes off so easy. Okay, and we're gonna take this and just kind of stick it where we want it. And then we'll remove this backing. Now the fun part is gonna get the front and back lined up so that it's exactly right. Yeah, that's the challenge. So to be honest with you, I'm going to do this off camera because I'm gonna actually need to stick my head over it and all you're gonna get to see is my head. Okay, there we go. I think we have most of it on there. And this is the very first wand I have ever made. And actually, I'm loving it. What do you think? Okay, now how about something quick and easy and fun for little girls to do at a birthday party? So I've already got this ready to go, but I just die cut two butterflies and I die cut this one out of pink and then I used the pink microfine glitter over the top of it. This one I cut out of green and used the green microfine glitter over the top of it. And I did this so that the colors would actually be really bold and vibrant. And I did this the same way that we did the straw, except that instead of using the terrific um, tape, which would have worked if I would have had wider tape and then die cut it that way or you know the paper but what I used was a spray adhesive and this is what I use but you can use any spray adhesive so after it was die cut I sprayed it I put on the, the glitter and just burnished it in just like we did with the straw just burnished it in and it is just beautiful absolutely beautiful this stuff feels awesome too doesn't feel like regular glitter and then I added some gems down the middle, some little rhinestones. And you could actually add rhinestones all over this if you want, but I wanted to do this something really quick and easy. And then you can use pipe cleaners, but I happen to have some of this sparkly stuff it was in with my Christmas stash. And so this is what we're gonna do. I'm gonna use that pretty straw that I did in green and pink, so this all matches together. And I am going to take some of this tape and I'm going to wrap it around in a couple of spots here. 
And this stuff is like terrifically tacky. So it's really amazing tape. I don't know why I would ever use anything else. And trust me, I have. Because I'm actually pretty new to this tape and I am loving it. So it will probably be the only, only double-sided tape I get from now on. So I put some tape around that. And I'm going to take the straw and I'm going to stick this in the straw, just like this, stick it down in there, and I'm going to squeeze. So I'm literally closing off the top of the straw. Oh, <laughs> my fingers are attached. That was, that was brilliant. Okay. Anyways, so now these are in here and we'll kind of curl them up here in a minute. And the next thing we're going to do is we're going to take some more of this and we're going to put a strip of it down one side because now remember the straw is now flat up here at the top so we know where that's at so let me get an idea of how much we're going to need i think that that's about right and make sure that it's on there really good turn it around to the other flat side uh-oh this stuff is so wonderfully tacky that it's stuck to my fingers okay let's try this again all right, we're gonna do that again. So we're putting a little strip right down the back. I love the way that it tears so easy. I don't need scissors. Okay, so we have that on there. And now we'll just peel it off and take one of our butterflies and line it right up so that it, you don't want the straw part showing. So we're gonna line it up a little bit higher. Stick that on there. Looks like I got it on a little crooked and I'm not sure that there's any forgiveness to that tape. So I'm not gonna mess with it. I'm gonna do it on this side and I'll do my best to line these two butterflies up to pretty much the same. And press that down. And there you have a little butterfly wand. We'll take these little little ends here and we'll kind of curl them under. And if you want, you could have, we could have, and we still can actually, there's room in there if we want to add some ribbon to hang down or, you know, anything hanging down from there. But right there, you have a really easy little wand that little girls can make at a birthday party quick and easy. Okay, I decided to add a couple of ribbons just to show you. And I did it really easy actually. I just took a tiny piece of the um, terrific tape and stuck it right here in between. And I did that on both sides. Cut my pieces of ribbon and then just attach them to the tape. And it was that easy or it could have been done beforehand, which probably would have been the smarter move. Now let's make a pinwheel. So to do that, you're going to need a square piece of paper. Double-sided is best, like scrapbook paper, and it's kind of sturdy. And this one happens to be six by six. You can do it three by three, four by four, whatever size it is that you need. The key is it's square. The next key is decide what part is going to be flipping over the front when we do it. So this will end up being the inside, this will be the outside. So I'm going to take this side and I'm going to find the center. So I'm going to use a pencil that I can erase if it shows and I'm very lightly going to be marking here. So I'm going to go from corner to corner and just very lightly leaving a mark, just like that, making sure that I can see it. And we're gonna turn it and do the same thing. So from corner to corner, lightly mark with your pencil. I'm gonna bring this up and see if you can see that. Where those lines meet is the center. And that is where you're going to put your hole. So, I have my little pokey tool here and I'm going to put my hole right there in the center. 
So I've poked my hole. Now, if you want, you can make the hole a little bit bigger, which will make this a little bit looser, um, you know, once you get it on the straw. So it's totally up to you. If you want it a little bit bigger than that, take your pencil and just kind of push your pencil gently and turn gently. All right, are you ready for the next step? Now you're gonna need a penny. And you're gonna take this penny and put it right over that circle, centering it the best you can. And that's gonna be your guide for how far to cut. And then you can cut from the corner to the penny. And if you can see your little line there, then you can just follow that line. And you stop at the penny. Okay, kind of grab it and turn. And we're gonna do this on all four. And this is what it looks like now. The next step is you need to put a hole in one corner of each one. So you either decide that you're gonna put them in the right-hand corner on each one or the left-hand corner on each one. And so I'm choosing the right-hand corner. You don't wanna go, you don't wanna go so close to the end that it tears. You don't want to go so far in that you have this big old long flap. So let me see here if I can find a good spot. And that way it'll give you an idea. Kind of like that. Okay, so now I'm going to go do that in the right corner of each one. There we go. Now I have all four holes. So the next thing is we're going to bring them in and match them up with that hole. And we are going to be using a brad. And I couldn't decide which brad I wanted to use, whether I want to use this great big pink one or a little tiny one. So I may try it both ways. We'll just see. But just put that through. Bring around the next one and put it through the hole. Bring around the next one. Put that through the hole. And the last one. Put that through the hole. And then here comes the hard part. We actually have to get it to the hole that we have in the bottom. There are two prongs on a brad, and it works best if you get both prongs through. <laughs> okay, so for the moment, just to hold this, I'm gonna go ahead and open that up. Okay, so there's our pinwheel. Isn't that beautiful? I think it came out great, and it's not even on the straw yet. So, you remember this straw? The one with the stripes? That's the one that I'm going to use. And so we're gonna need to poke a hole through the straw so that the brad can go through that. So I'm using my little pokey tool again and I'm coming down a little bit and poking that hole. Be careful to not poke your fingers. Okay, there we go. Go through it a couple times if you want just to make sure that it's a good hole. Okay, now we're going to turn this back around. We are going to open up this brad and we're going to stick it through that hole. Yay, I got it through. I probably need better eyes to do things on camera, but I got it through and I'm going to open it up like so. And there we go. Isn't that just the cutest thing? Easy to make. I made this really big because like I said, I did six by six. Probably four by four would look really great on this, but what a fun thing for a birthday party or for just a special occasion or to add to the top of a gift. Wouldn't that be pretty tied to the top of a present? So, so many possibilities. 
Well, I don't know about you, but I sure had fun playing with glitter today. And I hope you like the techniques that I used with the glitter. I will put links below so you can find all the products that I use to make these so that you can make some for yourself. Thank you all for watching today. And I really hope you enjoyed this fun project. And it is just so fun to play with glitter. <laughs> <laughs> because I haven't been allowed to for a long time because of contact lenses and an incident with a mammogram. But I'm using glitter now. So happy crafting, everyone. Bye-bye.